Hi everyone, my name is Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. Now, if you can remember from the last video, I did this awesome super tune video on the ST80. Now this ST80 has delivered me some outstanding images after the super tune and I must admit, I'm, I'm really impressed on its performance and the best thing about this telescope it is an acromat and an acromat refractor does have its limitations with the color fringing now I've had a few members and a few viewers ask me is it possible uh, to get the uprated focuser for the short tube 80 and um, I wasn't really too keen on getting this focuser to be honest with you because one it's very expensive uh, for an acromat that only costs 120 pounds probably a little bit more because price cost of living has gone up so prices have jumped up so I'm looking at 140 160 pound telescope here and for an uprated focuser, you're paying almost 200 euros for an uprated focuser, which is, to be honest with you guys and girls, it is really is quite steep uh, for this telescope. And to be honest with you, I've had a few viewers ask me, please, Marty, can you make a video on an uprated focuser for this ST80? And uh, I wasn't too keen on forking out a lot of money. I'm happy with the performance here, but I thought, okay, let's do it for the viewers and our, and our subscribers. And okay, I just saved a bit of cash and I ordered an uprated focuser. So in this video, for you guys and girls that asked me that question, so I totally get you guys and girls that there are some people who don't want to delve in onto the uprated focuser not knowing or very little information about it. I totally get it guys and girls. I'm this exactly the same. I don't want to invest in something that might be very disappointing because don't forget there's a lot of products out there that you can buy for, for astronomy, to, for telescopes, for astro imaging. And you can buy a lot of products that either don't work or not compatible with the telescope. And the other thing is you buy something and it's a complete waste of time. And some of the products are quite a lot of them are quite of the quite a lot of them are a bit of a gimmick. So not much use there, but you can invest a ton of money on something that's not going to be practical. However, there's a few viewers that have asked me. They are very interested in purchasing this focuser, upgraded focuser, and uh, I've heard few people saying, please do a, a, a product review on it. And also, um, I've had a few viewers saying, my, you don't know what you're missing. This focuser is outstanding. This, this is absolutely amazing piece of kit and it will transform the ST80. I don't know why you haven't done that on your Super Tune series. So in this video, I have purchased a product from Telescope Service, uh, which is a German astro company. All right, very good retailer. All right, they sell a lot of good products out there. And I must admit, I've shopped with Telescope Service for quite some time and I'm very impressed by their service. So they've got, I've got this focuser from Telescope Service. So um, before we start, please hit a like button, okay, sh to show your support in this video. Also, if you're new to the channel, uh, please subscribe onto my channel. And again, please share this video out. It may help someone who owns this particular telescope and are thinking the same of uprating their focuser. Because don't get me wrong, the, the inch and a quarter focuser on the ST80 is okay, but it's not great. It could be better. However, I know that Skywatcher tried to keep things cheap to make the product cheap so it's affordable to a lot of... Uh, 
customers out there and I totally get that. There's a lot of people out there who have got a limited amount of budget and they don't want to invest too much on a telescope. So yes, please share this video out. It may help others who are wanting to upgrade the focuser on the ST80. And don't forget to hit the bell. By hitting that bell, we'll keep you notified for any new videos that I publish out. And believe me, I have got tons and tons of videos, great ideas to show you guys and girls. All right, so please hit the bell so that you don't miss out. So, if you want to follow me on the next series of this uprated focuser for the ST80, please keep watching and let's do this so this is the focuser that i got from telescope service now this is the tsf o c r 2 m now a bit of a mouthful but that's the serial number that you need to order this focuser now this is the telescope service two inch uh, dual speed crafton focuser and this is for refractors with an 86 OTE tube. Okay, so 10 to 1 focuser and it's Creaston. Now you can buy this now. The prices have dropped at the moment in Germany because of things are going up. I've noticed that telescope service has dropped some of the prices. Now this was around about 200 yard euros. They have now dropped it to 159 euros and 58 cent that's a lot of reduction so it worked out around about 177 uh, euros and 58 cent which it works out around about 132 pounds at that exchange rate at that time so 132 pounds is not bad that's a lot of reduction compared to what it was initially about a good uh, six months ago six months ago it was around about 200 euros which is totally ridiculous so now they've got the uprated focuser there are quite a few available so please check out the description below all right i will provide a link to this uprated focuser so if you're interested in buying this focuser and you like what you see in this product review please check out the link and order one today so what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look, all right? Uh, this Creaston Focuser allows focusing free from play and it's suitable for observation and astrophotography, which is really good. Now, this is perfectly suited for Skywatcher refractors and even ED Apple telescopes. This adaption, uh, well, see, including adaption to refractor tubes and adapters with 86 uh, millimeter adaption so this can fit on variety of telescopes and uh, I must admit um, we're going to tick her out uh, I do like the well packaged box and I do like how the, the focuser itself is well protected so this is really good and as you can see wow that's looking very very promising indeed so as you can see there uh, this focus is quite heavy duty so yes uh, the focus itself can hold up to two kilograms and uh, i do like how the construction is made out of lightweight aluminium uh, ionized black as well as you can see the focus itself is very very smooth i do like how there is decals here which tells you how much focus travel it has. Now the focus travel says on their specifications is around about 74 millimeters uh, of play. So around about 74, which as you can see on that on the on the actual dial on the actual decal itself, it's definitely 74 millimeters of travel there. So you've got loads of travel. The, it also has stable ball bearings as well, actually on the tube itself. So it's got a very good mechanics. Here's a 10 to 1 focuser for fine tuning, which is really good for astrophotography. 
particularly if you get a banished off mask and you just quickly fine tune your focus and also it has this knob here where you can rotate the uh, actual focuser to orientate the camera all right which is really handy then it's got two clamping screws here okay with a brush anti-mooring ring okay so you don't mark your eyepieces or your camera adaption and it's got an inch and a quarter nose piece like so all right so quite highly quality made focuser the baffles inside are darkened as well so there's there's no need to sp spray matte black um, there is a bit of a shine here on the mechanism mountings that's probably for where the bearings and all that are but we'll see how it performs I'm not too happy with the the shine there I might need to spray paint that I'm not quite sure but um, yeah you can see just here there's a bit of a shine so I might actually touch them up with like a pen and marker or something like that I don't want to spray paint it but something to darken these edges there I'm not quite happy with that however everything else looks completely fine there is adaptions to put a finder scope bracket which doesn't come with the package which to be honest with you I think it's a real shame that you pay for a focuser with no bracket I would like to see a, a finder scope bracket on there which would help as well but everything else it looks really well made well constructed and it's a it's a lot smooth as well it's like wow it's butter smooth which is good to see so I've got the scales out and I'm just going to show you how much uh, this focus weighs okay I know for a lot of you guys and girls you want to know if it's a lightweight or too heavy it does feel a bit weighty so I can't promise you but I'm gonna put it on the scales and tell you exactly so at the moment what I've got is with the inch and a quarter adapter and everything attached we've got 847 grams so it's quite it's a little bit heavy but it's not actually that bad and uh, I must admit it's um, it's under one kilogram so it's not too bad if we remove the inch and a quarter adaption because usually if you're using the camera and all that uh, you don't I don't usually bother with the inch and a quarter adapter and with out the inch and a quarter we drop down to 747 48 grams so it drops down to about under seven and a half uh, seven and a half grams okay so if you take the inch and a quarter off it does make it a lot light, lightweight so 740 740 odd grams is not bad so it's quite lightweight so it's it's not too bad all right for what it is so we've got the super tuned st80 and uh, as you can see it's still a lightweight telescope even though I've got the uprated uh, dovetail I have removed in my last video I have removed the guy scope bracket okay so I've removed that and all that in place so as you can see there I've removed all the extra bits on there and uh, we're going to measure the actual weight of this telescope okay so to give you some kind of idea how much it's going to weigh so it's we're in grams and we're going to weigh the telescope like so now I've not got a good balance of that let me just do that again so we're going to weigh the telescope 
and as we got there is 1875 grams that's with the finder scope so what we'll do is we're going to remove the red dot finder okay put that out of the way okay you're going to remove the tube rings off there all right because you don't really need them you can lift the telescope out okay and there you go so you you're down to its main tube you're then going to use an issued Skywatcher cross point screwdriver okay and all you're going to do is just slacken the screws either way like so okay and here as well okay so what we're going to do is just take the screws out now I'm not marking the tube because I know the orientation already on this telescope notice the label here is the orientation of the tube okay so we're going to remove them these screws okay so now once you've removed all the screws you can then extract the tube like so then grab your uprated focuser and already it's looking really sweet already and you just line this up okay now the good thing about this this will fit in a nice and snug you've got a bit of play which don't let that dishearten you all right i would like to have seen it like a, a proper push fit but it's not too bad at least there's ample room here so it fits there with a bit with a bit of play they say that the skywatcher main tube is around about 86.4 millimeters diameter this fits at 86 but um, it fits okay and it fits snugly in there so it gives me a bit of play oh so we're not going to install the the tube horizontal the best policy with focuses is we're going to remove the dust cap tilt the telescope upright position like so so as you can see what we are trying to do is we're positioning the focuser so that it sits on the main tube and in line okay and level okay we want to make sure that that focuser sits properly on the tube so i recommend that you stand the telescope tube up upright put the focuser on there like so so it sits nice and flush and there's no gaps and all that if there's holes that are not aligned like this one all you've got to do is rotate the focuser okay find the hole okay once you find the hole where the threaded parts are you're good to go and then what you do is you grab your screws and you then line up each screw okay like so just put them in a few threads don't over tighten them don't tighten each screw up what you do is you're trying to line up uh, the tube itself okay you want to make sure that the threads go in properly onto the focuser we don't want to strip the threads okay and then we'll just rotate that round and get, grab the last screw and again keeping the telescope upright as you place the last screw on there okay you might need to wiggle it a little bit to find but once you get there you're completely fine so now we're going to do once you've got all three 
screws threaded in, you then tighten each one independently. Okay, whilst keeping the main tube upright, like so, bit by bit. All right, there's no torque settings as such, just make sure they're tight. So now we tighten up the last screw and there you go. We've now got the telescope tube and the focuser, upgraded focuser on there. And actually, look at that, that looks massively better than the standard focuser. It actually looks a lot better now on this telescope. And uh, wow, what amazing result. It's definitely uh, looks apart now. And uh, we're going to weigh the tube as it is. So remember, it's so we're going to weigh the tube like so to show you guys and girls. So, okay, so remember that the standard tube was, with the standard focuser, was around about 1.5 kilograms. Now with the uprated focuser, we've got 1.5, in fact we've got 1,595 grams. So it's literally 1.6 kilograms. That is not bad at all, considering we've just put the uprated focuser. So it's literally, it's, but the difference is it's only added literally about 100 grams, if that. So the uprated focuser is still pretty lightweight. But don't forget, we last time we weighed the other telescope is we had, we had the scope rings and dovetail. So what we're going to do is we're going to put... We're going to put the, the scope rings back on with its Vixen dovetail. Like so. And uh, we're just going to just going to zero it up. Okay, we're going to try again. This time, this time with the scope rings and the uprated Vixen dovetail, and what we got is two thousand one hundred and seventy-two grams, which works out round about two point one, or more. Yeah, two point. Yeah. 2.1 kilogram that's all it's added that is not bad at all considering that this is an 80 millimeter refractor there's a lot of telescopes out there um, that are particular got smaller aperture that weigh a lot more than this this is not bad at all and I must admit that's quite impressive 2.1 kilogram with its uprated focuser, the ST80 is still pretty lightweight. And that is definitely saying something. That is definitely impressive. Um, that's not bad at all. And um, we're also going to measure the standard focuser. And remember that the, um, the uprated one was around about 745 grams without the inch and a quarter adapter. With the adapter, it was around about 840 grams. Here we're going to measure the standard focuser to compare if it really is worth uh, the, uh, the upgrade. So this is the standard focuser. And we have got, I'm just going to double check, 488 grams. So yes, the standard focuser is a lot more lightweight. So yeah, there's a big difference. So the uprated focuser is, run, is, a, is a little bit heavy at 
an extra 250 grams at the most. But wow, I must admit, that's not bad. So the overrated focuser is a little bit heavier than the standard focuser, but you do have now with this focuser, uh, you've got the inch and you've got inch and a quarter format and two inch format with a better focuser with the 10 to, uh, 10, to uh, 10 to 1 fine focus and also you've got the tilt adaption as well if you want to use that as well so um, yeah really impressive so far so as you can see uh, with the operative focuser we have two Phillips screws which are countersunk now these screws are or adaption to fit a finder scope bracket. Now the thing is with the finder scope bracket, if you please check out the link below, all right, there's a link uh, to order this finder scope. Now that's something that sort of disappointed me with this focuser. I wish that there could have been a lot more mounting screws to place uh, your additional finder scope bracket. Now the, the standard one does come with a crappy mounting for a finder scope bracket but it's not great. Here you can have the adaption to fit either one or two mountings so that you could have a finder scope and a guide scope on there to reduce weight. Unfortunately with this design is that there's only one screw to mount it on. So yes, when, when considering mounting your finder scope bracket, also consider the weight. Now as you can see on the camera body, you've got a lot of weight on this side, is you've got the battery on this side and all the controls. So there's going to be a lot of weight, particular on the focuser and on the camera side. All right, so what we're going to do is mount this bracket on this side to try and counterbalance the weight. All right, if you place the, the finder scope and where all the main camera body and the focus tube is on this, this side, what you'll probably find that it'll be, it'll be heavy on one side. So what you're trying to do is trying to counterbalance uh, that motion, okay? So whatever weight you've got on one particular side, try and go opposite, okay? So that's the top tip to remember. But with this, all you got to do is take off this screw. And as you can see, these screws, I'm not particularly happy. I wish that Telescope Service installed more mounting screws. Take a closer look. As you can see there, I'm trying to get the focuser. You see that you've got that collimation screw i don't want the collimation screw to be blocked off okay what i'm trying to do is align the bracket on there as, as i put the screw on there like so and i'm just going to align it onto the main tube right onto the focuser i'm just going to tighten her up okay now I just noticed something I've just realized now um, damn the screws are too small I can't screw it in further enough you've got to be kidding me <laughs> oh no way so as you can see the actual screw itself is too small and I can't mount uh, this dovetail on there which is a real shame uh, that's really disappointing but um, it is what it is and uh, that's something that telescope service needs to start looking into is that um, it's a real shame but as you can see um, not to worry uh, what, luckily with this bracket you do get with this, with this bracket, you do get the mounting screws, which are a little bit longer. And the good thing about this bracket system is it does come with 
um, it does have the same thread so luckily all is not lost so as you can see there we'll place the bracket okay in there uh, ideally we want to get as much weight on the opposite side so we line up the 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 screw here like so and then what we're going to do is tighten up using the different bolt okay and you just tighten her up like so like so we just need to readjust that Like so, and just nip it up. And as you see, we have now got the finder scope bracket secured. We just... So, after close inspection, I've realized on this focuser, now, these tiny hex bit screws there, I thought they were collimation screws. So as you can see there, I've got the first one in there, but apparently, what I found out that this is not a collimation screw. So using the two mil, two mil um, Allen bit, you can take this screw off. And as you can see, this is a tiny screw, all right? That's all it is. And now I can actually put, um, I can actually put the existing screw on there the um, for the for the finder scope bracket and now I can retighten and bolt down the finder scope bracket like so and there you go so now you can actually screw on two screws there now I thought it was just one and uh, it's a lot more secure now that's much better so yeah these tiny screws here that you see on the side like that one there and obviously that one I've just removed I thought the collimation screws but they're not they're just blanking screws so you can actually secure two bolts on there without any problems so we've got the Sky scope set up on there and the good thing about now is as mentioned in my last video you're no longer restricted to inch and a quarter filters or inch and a quarter draw tube as obviously as you see here this worked fine I did get a bit a little bit of vignetting but it wasn't too bad but now with this focuser now we have now got the capabilities now of using two inch format filters and also we can use uh, flat, field flatteners and focal reducers so one thing you've got to bear in mind is whatever t-ring you're going to use particular if you're using a field flattener I've got a field flattener here as you can see there um, this is a T2 adaption for this field flattener okay so I'm only going to use a field flattener for this telescope because personally the telescope itself has got an F5 ratio which is more than adequate okay to be honest with you all right it's fast enough but there's one thing you need to highlight is when you get your T-ring when you're using a field flattener this needs a working distance of 55 millimeters so this t-ring here that I got here I measured the thickness and this is 11 millimeters so this is 11 millimeters thick the camera main body for the 600d is 44 millimeters so it gives me the perfect ideal 55 millimeter air gap which is required for uh, the fuel flattener to work properly okay so we're just going to clip it on there okay like so so we've got the t-ring in place we're now going to install our fuel flattener all right like so 
and we're just going to screw it in okay now you can just use an, an inch and a quarter no you can use a two inch nose piece all right but i'm going to use a field flattener also i have actually got a two inch filter and believe it or not i love this filter so much that i actually got the border contrast booster filler all right for, which is fantastic and again really is a perfect buy as before these contrast boosters really do help to reduce the color fringing and get rid of that horrible chromatic aberration so now we've got the field flattener and the inch and with the two inch format contrast booster and we can install it in there onto the telescope on the focuser and look at that that fits nice and perfect so now as you can see here, it does add a bit of weight on there so we've got a load of stuff on there we've got a guide scope we've got our red dot finder we've got a field flattener on there to correct the field as well and uh, we've also got the modified Canon 600D with the contrast booster filter installed. So then guys and girls, what I want to show you is something that I just found out, right, as well on this focuser. Now, as you can see, you can see there are tiny screws there, okay? So there's one there, one there, and then one on there. They're 120 degrees adjacent. Now, one thing I found out is that these screws, these tiny screws, these are literally two millimeter Allen screws. And what I found out that if they're not adjusted properly, the actual focuser can wobble, okay? So they have a bit of a wobble, okay, if they're slack. And as you can see there, I managed to loosen those screws off and take the focuser apart like so. Now what I've done is one thing I've noticed if we take a closer look you notice there's a chamfer. Now this chamfer was wearing away with the screws because the screws were not um, they were rubbing against the side of this uh, sleeve. So what I've done is I've slackened these Allen I've slackened these screws and I quickly gone over some Geo Optic Type 2 grease, okay, and I've just basically just lubricated uh, the chamfered edge around the race there, okay, and um, I can now just slot, slide in the entire focuser and sleeve. So it's very, very stiff. So um, to eliminate this wobble, I, um, you, you slide on the sleeve so it's nice and flush and you just tighten each of those screws, okay, bit by bit, okay, so you tighten them, not over tighten, just, just nip them up, okay, like so, okay. And you keep doing it until you can't rotate the focuser. So we keep doing it like so. Now I thought they were collimation screws and as you can see I can't rotate it now. So I back that one off slightly, half a turn and like you say, you just tighten one each bit. So tighten that one up. Okay. They're literally not tight at all. You just literally tiny efforts on there. That's all you need to do. Okay. Just tighten them up. Okay. I can't rotate that, so I back it off slightly. 
it's like literally a tweak of a turn okay that's too tight so I'll back that off so I'll back it off slightly then I rotate the other one again tighten it I can't rotate it then back it off slightly and there you go so these aren't collimation screws but they are screws that will they adjust the rotator and uh, to be honest with you this was very stiff without the grease or right? very stiff so get yourself some geo optic type 2 grease just to lubricate uh, that sleeve because that's something I've noticed uh, when it comes as standard it uh, it's not lubricated at all so the grease helps lubricate it and it won't affect the locking mechanism because I can prove that there's a locking mechanism if you adjust that and then you try to turn it you can see I can't turn it either way so it's very rigid so that bit of grease will help lubricate that sleeve prevent the uh, the screws from damaging that sleeve as well because it was literally bone dry all right and i was a bit um miffed where i had a bit of free play and there was like there was there was actually a quite a bit of slop but as you can see there i've adjusted them and now they are tight so they're tightened up you back it off slightly one by one until you can rotate the focuser and you have no free play and that's what you don't want that's a bit of a, a design flaw i think i think telescope service should have put a bit of grease on there to just to lubricate it and uh, to adjust those screws a little bit better all right so there was no lubrication at all but now it's free to rotate and it's very smooth the good thing is don't worry about the grease the grease will not go onto the optical path or the train of your telescope all right it's only on the sleeve part all right so the, you don't worry about the grease unless you're going into a hot climate but to be honest with you any high melting point grease will do okay but this stuff here i trust this this is really good stuff right and uh, this does the job okay but any form of grease is better than nothing okay so again th this should work out a lot smoother now so it's something i need to point out to you guys and girls if those screws are loose and you do get that um, little bit of a rock just re them up and just recheck it okay from time to time all right but now we should be good to go with that so now we've got our focus uh, all greased up on that sleeve and it's smooth to rotate as you can see beautiful and uh, there's something else i need to show you as well that i just found out now as you can see there you see these two bottom screws here now one of them is for the tension of the focus tube so like this one so like this one there all right this end one is the actual uh, resistance of your focus tube okay so as you can see there if you slacken it all the way out as you can see there look at that it's uh it's really really it's really 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 slack and it can actually fall out like so so make sure that this knob here is tightened up okay so just only nipped up don't need to over tighten it because if you over tighten it you can't move it so you you basically get to a certain tension so that you can use it to adjust your camera or eyepiece main body the other one this one here is a lockdown so if you lock down this this screw this screw here at the bottom 
the second screw it's a bit hard to get so I have to readjust my dovetail but if you lock that one you can't you can't move the the focus okay so I thought I'd show you that so this one here if you slacken that off that is your lockdown for your so you don't adjust your focus we're going to measure the total weight of the entire setup with the field flattener and everything else on there we're going to measure her up again we're trying to keep the weight down as, as much as we can and as we can see what can we see there we've got 3484 grams which which is almost 3.5 five kilograms of weight which is absolutely fantastic that is not bad at all so we actually are got everything on there under four kilogram that is fantastic and that's with the contrast booster the camera the fuel flattener and as you can see really impressive stuff so we've got everything we need now ready to astro image with this setup and I must admit feeling the focuser it can uh, this um, focuser can put on a lot of weight there seems to be no slippage whatsoever here this is really impressive so we've got a lot of weight at the bottom but I must admit it seems the focuser seems to handle that weight quite easily So then guys and girls, I have got my trusty super tuned ST80 with the focuser. Now with the focuser, I have got a two inch diagonal and one of my 32 millimeter Panaview two inch eyepiece. And in here, what I've also got is I've got my truly awesome, and it is pretty awesome. Yeah, it, like I said, I've got to wind these screws out. And I've got my trusty contrast booster. Okay. And uh, this is quite a lot of weight for the back end for this eyepiece and mirrored diagonal. But the focuser handles that weight easily. Okay. Very, very easily. Okay, so no slippage, no, um, like I say, if you got, get that adjusted correctly, you'd be very surprised how how rigid that is, that focuser. Very impressive setup, and the advantage of using two inch format eyepieces, as you can see, we take a closer look through the eyepiece, and as you can see there, look at that, that is a huge field of view really really impressive view indeed I mean look at that and uh, I must admit I can get the camera over there and we've got a very nice crisp view of the tower and the sea uh, I must admit this is really impressive excellent light grasp I think it's more like four degrees field of view but I'm not quite sure but I will find that out through astronomy tools and find out what eyepieces I'll get. But as you can see there, I've got a really wide field of view from this telescope. And that's the advantage of using this focuser. You can use two inch format eyepieces and get a really, really bright views, which are great for looking at galaxies and nebula, which are really faint. I mean, 32 millimeter plus hole, it's just good enough all right using a two inch format this is a panel view eyepiece and i must admit that gives me a 70 degree field of view i don't know what it is exactly what it is but as you can see through that um through this eyepiece this is really impressive okay so as you can see there look at that really crisp view the filter itself 
does show up as a yellow tinge, which is completely normal. But as you can see there, we've got a really, really big field of view and the filter has helped to reduce all that colour fringing. So it's definitely worth investing in this focus without a doubt because if you like your visual stuff and you like to observe faint nebulae or anything that's quite deep sky, this would be perfect for using 2 inch format eyepieces. I can't stress that enough for you guys and girls because if you use 2 inch format eyepieces, one it increases your field of view. Uh, the other is you get better light grasp and an unbelievable light grasp. And the third one is using 2 inch format eyepieces will enable you to connect camera uh, with using 2 inch format filters. You name it, the, the list is endless. And the thing with this setup is you can use focal reducers and field flatteners. So I thought I'd show you this uh, this example through a two inch format eyepieces. And I must admit, the light grasp has really, really transformed this telescope so much better. It really is. So um, what do you reckon guys and girls? Pretty awesome results. out uh, our super tuned st 80 millimeter refractor uh, we've got our two inch format eyepiece which is absolutely awesome now like you say uh, we're going to activate the motor drive so we can track the uh, track uh, the target and you can see you got the moon and jupiter right over there and it's absolutely amazing so I'm just going to start the motor drive and I'm going to take a closer look. So I'm going to switch off the, uh, the lights so you can see. So as you can see, we've got the moon, it's quite overexposed but as you can see in the corner, you even got Jupiter. So it just shows you how effective this focuser is. It really does widen the field of view. I've got Jupiter and the Moon in the picture. I'm just using my mobile phone. And this is absolutely amazing. Absolutely stunning. And uh, as you can see there, clearly see that I've got I literally got six degree field of view there through this eyepiece and it just shows you how amazing that is really is awesome so as you can see well I'm really impressed absolutely really impressed with this uh, we something I need to add as well I've also got the uh, this trusty contrast booster from Barda, which is that two inch filter and we're going to have a closer look as well and as you can see there you can tell straight away you see the yellow but the good thing is is that there is no uh, purple halo or blue around the moon or Jupiter you can see straight away that that filter has worked you just got a slight yellow tinge so you've got no chromatic aberration there which is really impressive really impressive so like you say this is really impressive stuff so as you see there stunning results as always so definitely the focuser 
give me the two two inch format eyepiece viewing absolutely amazing so yeah superb results every time So then guys and girls, so then guys and girls, we've got the ST80 back on track with the iUltron mount and as you can see we are, we've got the focuser, we've got focused on NGC 7000 which is the North American Nebula. Now, what we're trying to do is, um, I'm unguided, which to be honest with you, it's a real shame. I, I should have got it set up, but you can still astro image being uh, unguided, okay? So we're doing two minutes exposure time at ISO 1600. We are focus, the focuser was absolutely a joy to use, to be honest with you. I managed to focus using the focus mask and I must admit it was absolutely amazing how crisp and smooth it is. We're using the one times field flattener, okay? And the main thing I want to I want to sort out is that I've just taken the shot, I just need to check. I'll just cancel that. Right, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to dim down, dim down the shot. I'm going to flip through. All right, we've got the North American Nebula, which is 20 seconds exposure time. Now, as we also just dim down. Oh, wow, look at that. We've got. The North American Nebula, very nice and central. All right, fantastic results. And I must admit, if you look there, I'm crisp. All the stars are nice and sharp and pinpointed. That is absolutely amazing. I must admit, that is spot on. And uh, all the stars are corrected. With just two minutes exposure time, I saw 1600, which is a bit much, but all the stars are lovely and corrected. Oh, wow, that's exactly what I wanted. That's exactly what I wanted. Really is superb, that. So, as you can see there, massive, uh, that's a massive improvement. So, yeah, as you can see, guys and girls, this focuser has literally transformed this telescope. It's definitely worth the money. I've had no slippage, I was focused sharp, as you can see there. I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with this focuser. Really is definitely worth the money, without a doubt. And I managed to use the field flattener and correct all the stars. All the stars are nice and sharp and pinpointed, and that's exactly what I want. So yeah, fantastic work overall.
So, as you can see, fantastic results. Now, I can understand why a lot of the guys and girls recommended me uh, the uprated focuser from Telescope Service. Now, my findings is, what I have noticed, it gives me the ability to use two inch format field flatteners, focal reducers, and filters, which is a great addition. All right, so I'm not gonna worry about the vignetting effect, However, um, there are a few concerns that I have about this telescope service uprated focuser. One, there should be more holes uh, to fit to mount a finder scope bracket. I feel like there should be some more mounting holes to enable you to, diff to fit different types of brackets. I feel that there should be a finder scope bracket as well, included with the package. Now the focuser is well made, I totally, I do like the quality, you know, the light, it is quite lightweight for its construction, uh, it's a lot better, I can focus my image a lot smoother, it also gives me a wider field of view, uh, not just for the camera, but also through an eyepiece, so I can use two inch format eyepieces, almost four degrees, field of view on certain eyepieces, which is really impressive, which makes this telescope even more suited for wide field uh, observation. So it really does open up a wider light grasp, so it improves on the light grasp through your eyepieces. So it really is a good little focuser, to be honest with you. The focus upgrade is definitely a must. Yes, for sake of the price, it has got cheaper, which makes it much more affordable. I totally like how Telescope Service uh, do actually lower the prices to make it affordable for everyone else. There is a little bit of that slop um, where you're tilting the axis, all right, when you orientate the camera to 360 degrees. There is a little bit of free play. So bear in mind with those two millimeter Allen screws, you just need to tweak them up slightly because there is a bit of slop on that focuser, which also I'm not very happy about. Um, there's, there seems to be lack of lubrication uh, between there. There needs to be some kind of lubrication where the 360 orientation uh, sleeve needs to be. So there's something that's not quite right there. But after a few adjustments on the screws, it seems to work fine. So it's embedded in and it's nice and smooth now, but it also, you haven't got the slop, which is also off-putting. That will also affect your views, okay, and your images. So just be careful of those screws, all right? There is a tiny bit of slop when you add the extra weight on the camera and all that and the fuel flattener. But other than that, the focuser did actually cope with the weight, not a problem, all right? The quality, the CNC machine um, finish, the aluminium construction, really is a big plus, all right? And to be honest with you, uh, despite the lower price, there's only two companies out there that does the O-rated focuser, that is Telescope Service and GSO, uh, which is another brand that you can get from America. So GS GSO also, uh, do this uh, format focuser for this telescope. So there's only two available at the moment. There are only two um, retailers out there that are selling uh, this focus upgrade for this Skywatcher uh, ST80. Bear in mind, this will also work with the Mead Infinity 80. It will also work with the Celestron Travel Scope 80, and it will also work with the, the Orion um, the Orion ST80, which is the American brand, that will also work, this focuser will also work uh, with those telescopes. So it's not purely for Skywatcher, this will work on other brands as well. They're all similar construction with a similar designs. This focuser will affect those, um, those type of telescopes. But apart from a few flaws with the missing tools, Apart from that, it's a good buy. It's definitely worth the investment. 
So if you have got the ST8 in, you want to upgrade it, feel free, order this one today and you won't be disappointed. Apart from a few things that I found, I must admit it's a good focuser and it's definitely better than the standard focuser. And the good thing about this focuser, you are not restricted on inch and a quarter filters and also you can use fuel flatteners and focal reducers and you will not get the aperture, you will not get that uh, vignette effect in the images. Bear in mind, uh, the, the similar video that I showed you in my last video, uh, did use inch and a quarter filters, you can use inch and a quarter filters, but you will get slight vignette, and it's not much, but it's, it's not going to ruin the image completely. But um, again, when I'm using inch and a quarter filters, the Canon 600D is probably the maximum size. Any other half crop sensors are a little bit bigger than the Canon 600D. Um, you might not get away with it. However, the Focuser, without a doubt, is definitely a decent buy and I will highly recommend it. So I will reward this Focuser from Telescope Service four stars. And that's purely because of the lack of extra mounting screws. Uh, there's no tools. And there's slight slop on the 360s, off-putting slightly, but you can adjust it. So there are slight few things that could be improved. Hence the reason why I didn't give it five stars. But again, I provide good, honest reviews, which helps you guys and girls out. Because I'm not going to lie to you guys and girls because I pay for my products and I have the freedom to express um, my opinions on this product. And again, I'm not sponsored by any retailer by any means. Hence the reason my channel is 100% genuine. And as you can see there, it's definitely worth the buy without a doubt. So I hope this video is very helpful to you guys and girls. Again, please hit a like button if you like the, the video. Also, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe to my channel. And again, please share this video out because there may be someone else who's got a shop tube 80mm uh, refractor. And they want to upgrade the focuser because, again, the short tube is lacking. Uh, so the, uh, the ST80 is lacking uh, with that 2-inch format focuser which should be a must for this telescope but apart from that also don't forget to hit the bell by hitting that bell will keep you notified for any new videos which i will come which i'll publish very very soon so from that on thanks for watching and i wish you all clear skies